Hi, my name is Tim Brown and this is the first video of how to do your first visual design for web design and it's going to be a fun one because it's the first time we just start knocking stuff out. The truth is, is that visual designers have all the fun. No, I'm just kidding. Coding is also very fun. But the first thing that I do when I'm starting a visual design, it might be a little different than yours if you're working in Photoshop or uh, Sketch, but I work with Illustrator for my visual design and I'm gonna show you it that way. The main point is that we wanna accomplish a goal with the web design. So we wanna lay out the web design in a clean and clear way with navigation that's easy for people to use and with images and text that tell a company or organization's story. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing I would do if I was you is download some kind of grid because using a grid to do web design is great. I use 1200 pix grid. Uh, it's 1200px.com to download that. So I'm just gonna open that up here in Illustrator and like I said, whatever program you use is great. Um, in this particular case, I want this web design project to be a little bit bigger as far as width. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that open a little bit so that there's some gutter on either side. And you can do that as well. And then I'm also gonna pull it down because you know, the long form website is alive and well. So I like creating kind of a long visual design that we can use all that space to tell a company story. I'm gonna drag this grid all the way down to the bottom. And this grid is intended to allow us to create balanced visual design that doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't use wonky looking columns. We want the columns to be equidistant from each other, meaning all the same amount of distances this is just an easy way to do it. You lay, lay out stuff on top. All right, so I created a, a rectangle there. However you create a rectangle in your uh, program, in Illustrator, it's with this little rectangle tool. And I'm doing one for the header. And I'm gonna do one for this, what I call the hero unit. So for the time being, I'm just gonna kind of lock stuff out. I want to start to get the feeling of where things will go on this design. And one of the key things that we will want to add is the logo of the organization or band or whatever you're making a website for. I know that my first couple websites were not about a, a company, so I don't want to assume that that's what you're doing. But in this case, I'm just going to kind of lock in something. So I'm making another rectangle and I, I press this button in Illustrator to swap it so it's an outline. Um, and we're gonna put, I'm just gonna put the text logo just kind of to give you guys a visual reference for where things are going here. You may have a different level of familiarity with one of these programs. And you can you can honestly lay out a website in whatever you want. You can lay it out in the free program GIMP. You can lay it out in Photoshop. Whatever you're the best and the most adept at, that's what I suggest using. Right now, all we're doing is creating the picture that the website will be created from. It's kind of like the painting to the real thing we want to create the best looking painting and it's important that visual design is extremely important. Um, but it will need to be turned into code. And that's what the other video seg the, the other 10 videos for coding that I'm doing are for is to show you how to get it into the code. But first you do need a, a solid visual design if you want to do websites from scratch. So a common, I guess the thing that a lot of websites do is kind of they have this header up here with um, with different items on the navigation. So this would be called the nav. And I'm going to go ahead and change my font here to a little bit less bold one. 
and let's say you know you want the about page you want the services page you want the you know blog maybe um, you want the um, history I don't know whatever whatever items that you want on your page but I'm kind of giving some visual representation of the navigation up here I might give a little bit more space here and do contact what I like to do on these headers especially for uh, businesses would be to create a call to action up here that essentially allows a little bit more visual um, a little bit more like difference to the the main action we want people to take on the site and this goes back to that the key of web design is fulfilling an action for whatever it happens to be um, you know if it's your band then getting people to listen to that music on the website or if it's a company oftentimes it's contacting you or purchasing on the website or you know there's several different kind of key actions but in this case we'll pretend it's contact so what I did there is I <clears throat> turned the text of one of these items white and put some kind of color behind it um, Depending on what the product is, we might want it to be blue or we might want it to be pink or whatever, whatever fits that company well. So we want the visual design to reflect the purpose of the website for that company. So blue is a really common one. It's uh, one of the most trustworthy colors that you can use and it it's uh, multi-purpose. It, it works well for you know more female-focused brands, more male-focused brands, for tech, for a lot of different things. Um, so let's pretend that it's for a tech company. Um, I want to get a photo in here for the mock-up, and I don't have a real company that I'm doing this for, but I want to kind of mock it up. Uh, there's a great... Um, website called pick jumbo where you can get free stock photos so I'm gonna go there and pick up a free stock photo uh, let's pretend that this is a, a let's say a social media company and they also offer photography services um, so I'm going in here I'm copying this image and I'm gonna paste it into the illustrator file you do not want to just do this with any web with any photo you find on the internet. Um, it's actually illegal to do that for a lot of photos, especially ones that come from stock photo websites that are selling them. But in this particular case, like I said, Pick Jumbo is a free stock photo website. So you, if you get it from a free stock photo website, or if you take it yourself or really the point is is that it has to be so modified that it's unrecognizable if you take it from somewhere else so you'd have to do some kind of deep filtering to it or whatever um, as not to be strung up by the internet police um, not really strung up but you know what I'm saying all right so I'm gonna go ahead and overlay another rectangle on top of this Kind of the reason that I want to do that right now is because I, I want there to be a dark background or a light background. It doesn't really matter. Let's go. Let's try light. A light background. And I'm going to drop the opacity on this rectangle that I've overlaid here um, down a bit. Eh, I don't like it. Let's switch it. Let's switch it to dark. Or maybe even blue. Where is it? Where's blue? Okay. And then drop the opacity down. We're thinking about things to do here, right? Um, in this case, um, for in this scenario, maybe I'm going to try a multiply filter um, in Illustrator. And there's lots of different kinds of filters and different uh, programs. So maybe yours has some kind of uh, filtering option, or you can change the color settings on that image. Let's do a 
All right, so I think that that's going to be dark enough for us to essentially overlay some text on there. That's what I'm going for here. I'm essentially going for the ability to overlay some text. Um, so in this case, let's say get socially connected. Excuse my horrible tagline. Um, I'm using this as kind of a base. What I'd suggest for, you know, I'm allowing myself a very rough draft to begin here. And I, I hope you'll allow yourself the same kind of freedom to go in here and play around. I'm gonna change this to kind of a headline font. In this particular case, I'm gonna go with Geo Grotesque. Hold. Your fonts are gonna be a big deal when you start to do some web design here. I'm realizing I want this logo a little farther in off the edge. to give the, the appearance of a gutter over here on the edge. Um, so yes, get socially connected. And then let's say we wanna do a brief paragraph that introduces the company. In this case, I'm just gonna use uh, the, what's called uh, lorem ipsum, which allows you to kind of do some placeholder text and it's a wonderful tool. So I'm going to bring my font size down a little bit. I'm actually just going to open it up over here on the side and pop it up here just to give the appearance of some brief text. And making it white so there's a little bit more contrast. I am not convinced that we have enough contrast on this now that I lay it out. And honestly, you'll understand this as you get into this. So much of this is experimentation. So much of your work as a web designer is really messing around with colors and type and trying to find something that balances and trying to feel something, get something that has enough, um, that has enough contrast. So two of the biggest things in web design are balance and contrast. And by balance, I mean you want the, there to be a visual look that there's enough heavy things on this side and enough heavy things on this side or enough white or enough dark on both sides. You kind of want to, if you ever add any of one thing to this side, you want to add a little bit of it to the other side so it kind of balances out that whole yin and yang thing. And by con contrast, that's often just the the process of pushing the, you know, one element a little bit darker so that something white over the top um, looks bright and looks, you're able to read it. Readability and legibility are super important with typography. So you notice I needed to change this. I needed to add a dark overlay on top of this image so that this text would be a little bit more obvious to see. So in this case, let's say we got to get a second section and um, I'm going to add that here and maybe we do that section just a light gray, um, a little lighter. Basically, I think if you take anything away from this initial little lesson, what I would suggest taking away is you can make whatever you want visually um, in Illustrator, Photoshop, GIMP, Sketch, and thus uh, create a visual design. And then after, it doesn't need to be coded, but first it's important to recognize how to lay things out visually. That's a very crucial piece. So get in there and experiment. Um, in this case, let me just, take this shape uh, a little bit. I want the, to round these corners a little bit. Um, so it looks a little bit more like a button. And I'm gonna copy and paste this. I'm gonna get rid of all these other elements and uh, put a button down here on the header, let's say. Um, as a kind of a side note, you want these, these um, call to actions. That's what they're called, the call to action button. 
um, you want it to be somewhat compelling. So in this case, let's say, contact us now, and I'm going to use an exclamation point um, and move it over. A lot of times what people will do is have the main action as a kind of a little bit bolder of a, a um, color. And then from there, I'm trimming that text down a little bit. It's too much. And then from there, maybe having a secondary action. So what would be a secondary action for, let's say, a tech... A technology focused with a social media company it might be C case studies right and what we'll do then is maybe create a button style that's just a white outline this is a, another common convention and then move this one over here so right now I'm kind of showing you maybe what would be a very common visual design. And I do think it's good to get familiar with the, the language and the systems of design that is somewhat ubiquitous. Uh, it's in by ubiquitous, I just mean everywhere. This is kind of a really si a simple design, but the point is, is that you want to become familiar with what's commonplace um, and really figure out why it's done that way. And then you can go out and break rules. And honestly, feel free to break rules from the beginning. But I wanted to give you some kind of, this is a, a way to lay out stuff in, in web design. And I'm going to slowly give you tips about why I would do things a certain way and so on and so forth. And then you can kind of push the boundaries. And I'll talk to you a little bit about some ways to do that in the later videos as well. For the time being, we've got this, this kind of initial soft sell C case studies. We've got the contact us now button. Um, feel free to follow along. Um, and then maybe what I would think about this next section would either be some photos or it could be icons or it could be whatever you want to do. Um, let's say there's three icons here or there's three photos here for services. You want to, let's, I'll, I'll leave you with this for the last item. You want, and I'm using this align here, it's a wonderful tool in Illustrator. Um, there's also that in Sketch. Um, using the ways to vertical align the top and kind of center align them. And then I'm using distribute to distribute these icons so that they're kind of equidistant, um, the same distance from each, each other. And so let's say we're setting ourselves up for icons. We've created this initial hero area and the next lesson will be, um, you know, how I would, create the next couple sections. But in this case, I, I want to leave you with, let's say you have 10 services. An important factor in web design is what don't you include? Instead of trying to include everything, it's really our job a lot of times to minimize the amount of options so that we clarify what's most important. It's prioritization. So you prioritize the top three services, and in that way you're giving people one of three options and really not, not getting them into a place where they, they freeze up because it's too many things. Because honestly, if you have too many options, sometimes that can be a bad thing. So in this way, giving three options to give people a clear next step without overwhelming them. And that is everything for this particular tutorial. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And we're going to go through this, the next section in a little bit more detail on how I might do that if I was doing my first website design. All right, see you.